Well, at the end of a big week when all I need is a dose of common Aussie, good old fashioned common sense from a good old fashioned Aussie, who better to join us than National Senator for Queensland, Matt Canavan. Matt, welcome. How are you, mate? Great to see you. Going well, Rowan. On my way to Canberra, so can't ah, wait there. to get down there. <laughs> oh, the common sense will go out the window when you get there, but <laughs> uh, enjoy, it, enjoy it while it lasts. Um, Senator Canavan, our fragile democracy is under threat, apparently. At least that's according to the Prime Minister, Anthony Albanese, who today, chatting with the Australian's Greg Sheridan, uh, uh, the Prime Minister who was referencing the recent hammer attack on Paul Pelosi uh, in the States, uh, Albanese, Anthony Albanese has hit out at the increased polarisation and extremism of political discourse across the West. Now, Matt, of course, the Pelosi hammer attack is, is horrible and shocking. We've seen attacks across the West. Uh, UK MP David Ames, former Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe, uh, and just overnight an attempted assassination on former Pakistani Prime Minister Imran Khan. But what is... Anthony Albanese, why is he referencing uh, a fragile democracy here in Australia? Well, look, as you say, uh, Rowan, all of these attacks uh, should be condemned and there's no place uh, uh, for, for violence uh, in our political discourse or debate. Uh, uh, but it seems to me that poor old Anthony's just being a bit of a poor man's Joe Biden here. Uh, it doesn't seem particularly relevant to our own country. The US is obviously going through its own divisions, but I don't know, this seems to be a distraction maybe uh, for Anthony because he can't deliver a power price uh, uh, bill reductions like he promised just six months ago. I mean, if our democracy is fragile, uh, it probably doesn't help uh, when someone makes a clear promise to lower your power bills by $275, gets elected on the back of that promise, they repeated the promise almost 100 times before the election, gets elected and then within a few weeks drops it. That doesn't help much to build trust or institutional uh, strength in our, in our democracy. And can I also add too that the greatest sort of uh, uh, outpouring of uh, violence we've seen uh, in uh, the Australian parliament, Anthony Albanese's generation, was when the unions and uh, egged on by Labor, the Labor Party stormed our nation's parliament during the 1996 budget. Uh, Anthony Albanese was in Parliament and I've never been able to get to the bottom whether he was actually at the protest that day. <laughs> Maybe given these comments, uh, an enterprising journalist should ask Anthony, uh, did, was he there the day Parliament House was stormed? <laughs> That's a great question. Um, yeah, well, fragile democracy, I would have thought fragile energy supplies, fragile economy, as you say, are kind of more important uh, to most Australians. Um, We've had the Industrial Relations Minister, and I also might add there, uh, Senator Canavan, if you're looking to Joe Biden for your political inspiration, <laughs> I don't think that's a great path <laughs> to be going down. Uh, mind you, Anthony Albanese in the past has looked to Jeremy Corbyn and others for political inspiration, so uh, I guess it's all of a kind. Uh, closer to home, Industrial Relations Minister Tony Burke is eyeing off a deal on multi-employer bargaining Matt, uh, with the economy in a, 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 a position that is, can only get worse, as businesses have warned, this new industrial relations form is only going to lead us back to the future, to a time of union strikes and disruption, isn't it? Yeah, well, Rowan, I wasn't around the 1970s. I was born in, the, in 1980, but you might be able to tell me it seems like people in the current Labor government have some kind of fetish for the 1970s. You know, I don't know if it's the flared pants or the Afro hairdos, but they seem to want to go back there. They're, they're, they're trying to reintroduce the energy shortages that the world faced during the 1970s uh, with the uh, OPEC oil crisis. And, and uh, as you say here, they're now seeking to uh, apparently reintroduce the industrial relations laws that we had in the 1970s, and that clearly failed. Remember, back in the 1970s, when we had these laws, we ended up with the highest and most sustained period of inflation in Australia's history. Indeed, that inflation dragon, so to speak, uh, wasn't slayed until Paul Keating's recession we had to have. Uh, so why would we want to uh, even flirt with the possibility of reopening that can of worms, that inflation can of worms, when we've already got high inflation today. It just shows again, Rowan, that the Labor Party doesn't seem to be, this Albanese government doesn't seem to be focused on the issues that I know concern Australians the most. The most important issue right now is cost of living, and then it's cost of living, and then it's cost of living. Now, none of these policies we're discussing, uh, you know, the ISIS brides coming over, uh, the, the, uh, the, 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 the IR reforms, none of them are going to help 
uh, get people's cost of living down. And that's what this government should be focused on. But as I say, they seem to be trapped in a 1970s time warp. Yeah, exactly. I think Albo's been listening to Led Zepp 4 a little bit too much. Um, in the wake of their <laughs> disappointing first budget, Labor are now facing, uh, as Phil Khoury pointed out in the Fin Review today, uh, they're facing the harsh realities of being in government. This has got to be, and I, I, as you know, I thought Peter Dutton's uh, budget in reply was fantastic. Um, would have liked to see him go a bit harder, but all the key points were there and it was really good. Uh, this is the golden opportunity for the coalition now to seize and to begin really shaping a narrative around doing the opposite of what Labor are doing. Ditch net zero, go nuclear, fight the culture wars and win them. That's my opinion. What's yours? Well, Rowan, look, I, I would hope that the government actually solved these problems. That's what I would hope uh, happened because I don't want to see Australians or Australia suffer. I don't want to see our nation get weaker. Uh, I wish the government all the best. But they do seem to be, as I say, taking us down a path of higher prices, lower cost of living, lower real wages, and with no plan or focus on, on delivering on those. So our job, as His Majesty's opposition, is to present an alternative that in two years' time uh, we can say, look, we've got some solutions to fix these problems. Now, if we, in two years' time, go to the election with exactly the same policies of the Labor Party, even if the sky is falling in, people may not vote for us because what? how would we make anything different if we've got the same policies? So I, like you, was uh, extremely heartened to see Peter Dutton outline a clear alternative in his budget and reply last week. We've got to build on that and make sure we have the guts uh, and the courage to take forward an alternative set of policies, to argue for our principles and values, which are to support business, to support the development of this nation, to support people uh, who want to, want, to, want to get ahead in life and their families. And if we do those things, I do think we can win the next election because uh, this mob doesn't seem to know what to do. Well, the good news, uh, Senator Canavan, that I can reveal exclusively to you tonight is that you are going to win the next election in a landslide based on the fact that Malcolm Turnbull declared you unelectable. That's a surefire sign that you are going to win in a landslide, <laughs> I promise you. Uh, but finally, Matt, a little bit more nonsense on climate activism today, this time Parliament House. Uh, where are the security mob when you need them? Well, Rowan, uh, I welcome everybody expressing their democratic view. I'm actually on a convoy right now from Rockhampton all the way to Canberra. We're driving down to Canberra because the Albanese government is strip funding for a, a really important infrastructure project, the biggest road project in Queensland, the Rocky Ring Road. But I've got, I'll reveal here exclusively for you, Rowan, we've left the super glue at home. We're not going <laughs> to get up into any antics. We will be an example, a shining beacon uh, for my friends at Extinction Rebellion to say how you should protest, make your point heard, do it forcefully, but do it peacefully and within the law. Brilliant. And I hope you're going to stop at plenty of steakhouses and burger joints along the way and keep that, <laughs> keep that red meat uh, <laughs> being consumed. Uh, Matt Canavan, Senator Matt Canavan, thanks so much for joining us tonight on Credlin.